you know, things to keep in mind as we go through everything. Um, motions to dismiss have a very low success rate overall. Um, that is by design. That is not, that is a feature of the legal system, not a bug. Um, you know, sometimes they're filed because the client expects them to be, you know, they want it to be. You don't necessarily think it's going to win, but your client's like, you know, let's give it a shot, see what happens. You know, maybe they play roulette and they know that, you know, number seven is going to hit every once in a while. So they're like, eh, it, might, it might hit in my case. Eh, fine. Uh, they want to spend the money on it. And it's, you know, you're not writing something that's, you know, out of bounds or you think that maybe there's a decent enough argument on it. You know, you go ahead and file it for them. Um, Sometimes lawyers just need to make their next mortgage payment. So they, you know, this is a good way to start. Um, sometimes they actually have a good argument. And, you know, although I think that's probably the least <laughs> least likely in many cases, um, that actually may be the case here. I, I'm not going to say maybe. That is the case here. They have some really solid arguments. Um, you know, motions to dismiss, the judicial philosophy, if I can just really quickly go over that, it's preferable judicially to decide cases on the merits. Motions to dismiss are not on the merits. Motions to dismiss are procedural motions. They do not get to the merits of the case. So all they're designed to do is what's called test the sufficiency of the of the complaint. Um, it's basically like asking the question, did the plaintiff do its job correctly and draft uh, enough facts into their complaint to make the case? Um, and, you know, and the other side, the other thing is the because because of the judicial philosophy I just talked about where they want to get to decide cases on the merits, um, the, mo the court at a motion to dismiss stage is required, not optional, required to assume that any well-pled facts in the plaintiff's complaint are true. That doesn't mean that they are true. It just it's like being the presumption of innocent until proven guilty, right? doesn't mean you are innocent. It just means they, you know, you, they get, they get that presumption at this particular stage. Um, if it gets past the motion to dismiss stage, the plaintiff still has to prove everything, you know, every material fact in their complaint. They just get the benefit of the doubt right now. Um, so if the SEC, if the court finds that the SEC has pled the facts correctly enough to get through on any particular claim, they get to move forward with it. It does not mean that they win or that the court made a finding on any particular fact or anything like that. Um, that is a mistake that lots of people make. Um, it's a mistake that was just highlighted hugely in the um, the most recent coin uh, was it Coinbase or somebody's um, some somebody came out. Yeah, I think it was the civil case, the uh, class action against Coinbase. Everybody's like, yeah. "Holy shit, Coinbase won!" No, no, they didn't. So. Uh, they got one case again, one claim against them dismissed because the plaintiff didn't plead the facts correctly, but they're still going to have to defend the rest of the, the lawsuit. Um, and none, none of those things that were found are going to be, you know, that's th those are findings for the motion to dismiss stage. They're not findings for the case. And that I think that's hard for people who don't practice to understand. I just kind of want to make it clear. Um, so let me let me just dumb it down. This is my new favorite analogy I came up with yesterday. Um, the motion to dismiss stage is like a fat kid on an obstacle course. Um, if the SEC is a fat kid and they manage to somehow pull their bloated ass over the first obstacle, it does not mean they're going to finish the course. It just means the, all it means is that they get to move on to the next obstacle and try. So that's where we're at. So mm. uh, the SEC's oh. job, it was, the SEC's job was to draft its complaint properly. They had a 100% control over that. 100% control over what went into it. Um, and I think, you know, I, I've noted from kind of the early on stage where, you know, this thing is pretty shitty. It's not that great. You know, a lot of people have said the same thing. You know, they read it. They're like, eh, you know, it's not, you know, they kind of, you know, kind of phone this one in a little bit. Um, so the motion to dismiss basically goes after and says, hey, you guys did a shitty job drafting your complaint and here's why. That's why... In the in the motion to dismiss, you see, I don't know how many times, God, a hundred and something, where they you know said the they failed to allege this, they failed to do this, they do not allege these facts or whatever. Well, they, they, those are those those things are in there for a reason, you know, because um, you know the that's the whole object is to show that the complaint is insufficient on its face to, you know, so even if they could prove it, 
they still can't win because they didn't allege enough proper things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there, is there any particular, I don't know if you want to go through hit on uh, argument, just let me know anyone you want to hit on to and I'll, I'll, I'll click through it. It looks like I can click through the PDF too. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I, you know, well, let's, if you want to start with the strongest one, let's start with the strongest one. It's jurisdiction. 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 Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's the one, you know, I, I kind of, I wrote a, I wrote a posting law school class on that a few months ago. That is the strongest argument that they have. Um, and I've liked it from the start. It's, you know, the, uh, one of the attorneys yesterday said, you know, they think Hex is going to win on the jurisdiction argument. I think, I think she's right. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how things, there you go. Yeah. I, I don't think, I don't, you know, I, I don't make predictions, but if I had to put money on one, that's going to win. Um, that would be the, you know, the one that I think has the best odds. And we can, you know, we can, uh, so like without getting into too much detail, because personal jurisdiction takes a while to learn in law school, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. there's, there's personal jurisdiction basically means, um, does the court have the authority, the ability to bring this person into their courtroom and make a decision that binds them? make some kind of ruling over them where they have to comply. So that's what jurisdiction essentially boils down to. Um, it is much different from, you know, you and I uh, doing something, you know, you know, if, if I'm, if I rob a bank in, 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 uh, you know, in Phoenix, you know, the court has jurisdiction over me if they catch me outside the bank. I mean, no question, right. If I, if I, if I solicit donations for to a charity on a corner, um, you know, at, you know, in, in Phoenix, um, and there's no charity and I'm just committing fraud. Um, I can, you know, I can run away to California and spend the ill gotten gains, but they have the ability to come get me because I did it and harmed the citizens of Phoenix and, you know, defrauded people here. So they can, that's easy. Um, yeah. It gets a little, it gets a little harder in the internet age, where you know just because something's up on the internet, it's it's accessible to literally everybody in the world, and that that does add some you know problems when it comes to jurisdiction. So the way the courts have basically gone through that analysis in recent years, you. And, and like even before even before the internet, um, you would have to do something to target the citizens of a particular state, or take some act that would allow you to, uh, you know, uh, you know, avail yourself of laws in that particular state. Um, so you can't escape jurisdiction if I'm if I'm doing business in uh, you know if I'm if I'm if I live in New Jersey and I you know drive into Poughkeepsie, New York and start selling you know toasters door to door, um, you know I am availing myself of the laws of that state. I am interacting and doing business with the citizens of that state. Um, if my toasters are faulty and they blow up, um, you can haul my ass into New York State. There's no question about it, right? Um, if I put up a website and say, I'm, you know, I, I'm, sell, I'm selling toasters um, and here's a discount to people in New York state and people from New York state buy it on my discount and I ship them a toaster, I can still be hauled into New York state because I'm damaging this. I target them specifically and damaging and I'm dam causing damage in New York state. So I can be hauled in there. If I put up a website and say, you know, I'm selling toasters, um, and you know here's my location i'm in new jersey and somebody from new york buys one on the on my site and i send it to them did i target them now we're starting to get into those you know weird you know now we're now we're crossing a little bit of a, of a blurred line right so you know one i don't know maybe not you know if i sell five thousand of them and i only sold six thousand units that year maybe you know um so yeah, there you go. I mean, whenever you see the word fail, it's probably, you know, <laughs> it's it's not great for your complaint. So, yeah, we use that word a lot and we use it for a reason. Um, 
but uh, you know, so now we have that's 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 jurisdiction with inside the United States. It's much harder to grab jurisdiction over somebody from outside the United States, and that's what we're that's what they're trying to do here, and that's why I think. Um, that's why I think Richard's best argument is personal jurisdiction. Should he have to show up in New York and answer these claims in the state of New York? Well, my first question is, what the hell did he do in New York that would allow New York to grab it? And you know, so far, what we saw in the complaint was the only thing the only thing they talked about is you know Uniswap um, and of all the weird shit. They didn't even allege Uniswap was there. They just said the developers lived in New York, which is even weirder, right? I mean, so, I mean, you know, if my developers live in, you know, if they if they if they if they were working or happened to live in New York when they but they drove into New Jersey every day to do work, I mean, you know, where what does that mean? I don't, I don't know. You know, um, if they were working on a project for somebody in Argentina, does that still mean that that you know? Uniswap's headquartered in New York, or you know, Uniswap, you can grab them into bring them into New York because it's, you know, there's there's a lot of weird stuff in that complaint. It's not very well, again, it's not very well drafted. It's much easier to interpret or talk about a well drafted complaint. Um, it's harder to when you have to guess at something. Do you um, think that they're using New York or other places? Like, what to me, like a lot of tech companies are in California, right? Or yeah. there are other places or headquartered otherwise. Why would do you just think New York is more friendly to SEC stuff? They have more like people there. Yes. They think they have a better chance of doing it. Like, why does all these things come from New York? Uh, the, the, the two circuits that have the most SEC actions filed in them are the second and ninth. So California and New York. Um, and so that's where the largest body of law is. It's where the judges have been, I guess, more exposed to SEC claims over the years. Um, you have more second circuit and ninth circuit opinions to rely on when you're, you know, when you're doing something rather than the, rather than the court not being bound and do, being able to do what it wants to do with respect to a particular issue. So just um, bringing it in the places that are most friendly to them, or they have the most. You know, correct. Yeah. The best, uh, it gives them an advantage basically. Yeah. They're trying, they're, they're trying to pick home field is what they're doing. So, and um, so in this particular case, they, you know, found somebody in Brooklyn, apparently. And, uh, you know, that's where the Eastern District of New York is. So they filed there. Um, it's, I think, it, I think that's pretty sketchy because at, at this point, we don't even know if the SEC made up the dude in the, in the complaint, right? I mean, all it says is that we had somebody who said they bought this or whatever. Well, fuck, I don't know. Like, will that come um, in discovery? Uh, yeah, it will. It would. Yes. Well, we're still a ways off from that. So. Well, I guess we'll find out tomorrow how far off we are because there's going to be that hearing. I'm hoping if, if somebody lives in New York, um, you know, and has some time off at 1030 a.m. and wants to go to the Eastern District of New York in courtroom, I think it's 11 C South. Um, you can just walk in. It's a public hearing. You know, take notes. Let me know what happened. So, um, yeah, that'd be awesome. Anyone out there who can do that tomorrow. You know what time? Yeah, it's 1030 in the morning uh, in New York time, and it's only probably going to be an hour or so. I mean, tops. So it's not going to you know, it's not going to eat it the whole day. Um, so I'd be shocked if it went through lunch. So um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, too, if, if, if people need to take off work or whatever. I don't know if you if you were actually going to go do it. I don't know how you wouldn't get that crowd funded by the community. If someone like, you know, send in some uh, send something to your wallet to to make up for your uh, your time spent or your day off work or something. If that, if money is an issue, anyone out there listening for New York, just give me this information. This would be a uh, really cool for the community. I'm sure that would sure, be very sure cool. somebody would help out with that. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. So like, you know, if, if that's, if that's something that's, you know, stopping you from going, um, yeah. I mean, just send it to Max and let's see what, see what comes out of it. Yeah. Yeah, send me the bill. I, I don't monetize, but uh, I, I definitely do pay for many more things than I take in. I take in zero. I only spend money. So it does fit my MO as far as paying for that. Not saying yeah, I would, same. but uh, I think the community would in general. Though. Yeah. Same. Every time I do like a pacer pull, you know, you know, you get charged for pacer, you know, so I'm, you know, I'm not practicing anymore. So I'm not billing it to anybody. <laughs> this is just me, you know, me spending money for, you know, to, to get docs that we need off, you know, off a of pacer. So. Selfless. But I don't mind. I don't care. This is 
you know, this is, this is fun for me. I'm enjoying this. So, you know, I'll do and you want to win, time. right? You're here to win. Oh yeah. That's yeah. exactly right. So I don't even know what we're talking about, but Oh, jurisdiction. Uh, jurisdiction. Yeah. Whenever, uh, whenever you feel like we tied yeah. that one up, we can go into another one. Yeah. Let's go back though. Like, cause now we're, now we're talking overseas jurisdiction and overseas jurisdiction mm -hmm. is a lot more complicated. Um, the, because the the defendant has to specifically target people in the United States, and more specifically, in this case, if you want to pull them into the, the venue of the Eastern District of New York, you have to specifically target the um, you know somebody in New York, in the Eastern District of New York. And I think Richard Richard's attorneys did a pretty solid job of basically saying, listen. Um, you know, Richard set up, you know, the equivalent of a post office box. And if you wanted to mail something to that post office box, knock yourself out. You know, you're going to do it anonymously, uh, send a dollar in cash to this post office box in Estonia or Russia or, you know, Egypt or whatever the hell. Um, he has no idea who's going to send stuff to them, no idea where it's going to come from. Um, money just shows up, you know, and that's kind of the idea behind the pulse chain sacrifice address. I mean, there's not really any way for Richard to say, you know, um, zero X ABC dot, 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 one, two, three, four, five came from a person in the United States. No way for him to know that. I mean, that's just, that's the whole point, isn't it? Um, that's why he's told everybody specifically, don't, you know, you know, you have to send from, you know, your own private wallet, you know, um, that was that was a smart thing to do, right? You because you cannot tell where the where those transactions originated. I mean, even if, even somebody in uh, in Mexico could set their VPN to the United States, so even a VPN wouldn't help you, right? I mean, if you found that the transaction was, you know, if you could trace the transaction, you know, and and figure out where it originated from, doesn't mean it originated from there. A lot, lots of people in crypto use VPNs. A lot of people for note with outside of crypto use VPNs. That's a good point. Um, so you know that that means nothing realistically to to say that hey, some you know he must have known or he could he should have known that some of these people were in the United States. I mean, what do you, what do you base that on? The fact that they speak English. What, the, what do you base it on, right? Um, and then, you know, and since it's their job, it's the SEC's job. Again, I'm going to harp on this all day long it's the SEC's job to put facts in there that are sufficient to make their complaint move forward if they had it they needed to put it in there if they said he he, sh he should have known because this that and the other thing you know then that should have went in there you do a shitty job drafting a complaint sometimes you're stuck and that's kind of what i think what he's hoping for what we were hoping for is that you know the SEC gets a little bit you know gets punished a little bit for their uh you know their lack of diligence in drafting this complaint um, or or maybe they just don't have a lot to go over or they're they're like yeah you know what this is the best we can do we can just put a bunch of high level stuff in there and a bunch of hopes and wishes and maybe it'll work out maybe they'll settle or whatever i mean do you do you think they actually have do you, do you think it was just you know lack of putting time or resources or otherwise to draft it or they literally just don't have a lot to go off of both I think it's a, I think it's a combination of, of both. I think, you know, I think they got lazy. Um, they didn't do a particularly good job drafting this complaint. That's not a secret. You can ask any lawyer in the world to read this complaint and they're going to find holes in it. Um, they're going to say, this is you know ripe for a motion to dismiss on this issue and that issue. Um, the, you know, the specifically the fraud claims, I mean, the fraud claims are drafted so shitty that, you know, a first year graduate, I just passed the bar three weeks ago, I can draft a motion to dismiss on the fraud claims. No question, because it doesn't meet the pleading standard. I mean, it's it's that, it's so obvious that it doesn't meet the pleading standard. Um, rule 9B or whatever says you have to plead fraud with specificity. And that just basically means that, hey, somewhere in the 48 paragraphs above, you know, if I prove one of those things, it, it meets the definition of fraud. Nope. You have to say what the statement was, why it was false, why he knew it was false, why, you know, all those, you have to basically put the defendant on notice of what statement in particular you're claiming is, is fraudulent. Um, you can't just say, eh, something he did was, and we'll, we'll prove it later. 
So that's why I also think that his fraud claim, is, you know, the, 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 the motion to dismiss on the fraud claim is pretty solid. But, so you can't just be like, look, the guy twerked once. He must be up to no good. You can't just right. say, oh, <laughs> you, know, you got a point. We don't like that. So, yeah, no, I, I, I think that there's not there's not a wasted word in this in this document. This is a very well drafted motion, um, and you know they they went through everything pretty clearly. I mean, with the fact that they spend twelve pages on jurisdiction out of essentially what is it, fifty four pages of meat in the in the brief. I mean, 69 pages, but, you know, a lot of them are bibliography. Um, yeah. And, but, uh, you know, when you when you spend just just under a quarter of your entire brief on one specific issue, you're driving that issue home. And they didn't run out of things to say. You know, there, there are more things that they could have pointed to, but they just, you know, the people, the other attorneys who were drafting the other sections are like, dude, we got to get in here somewhere. Like, <laughs> you know, I've got stuff too, so... Yeah, you know, I understand that that's the important, that's the most important thing, and probably the most likely. And you know, but, let's not forget that the, you know, jurisdiction, personal jurisdiction, is a pass/fail test, right? So, if there's no personal jurisdiction, every other claim goes away, all of them. The entire case goes away, because you, you have no authority. Again, like I said earlier, judge has no authority to issue an order on anything in this case against the defendant if they don't have personal jurisdiction over them. So. If they win on that issue, it's fucking gone. And that's why I'm hoping that they made their point well enough and the SEC, you know, didn't do anywhere near enough. I don't think they did to establish personal jurisdiction inside the United States or inside the Eastern District of New York. So I love it. At least go. Yeah. Yeah, um, seriously. I'm excited. 